Hello everybody, welcome back to my channel. Today's video is going to be a little bit of a different format than the previous ones. Um, there have been a number of questions just inquiring how did I go from an ankle injury to having an entire spinal fusion. And so I wanted to try to clear up any confusion. Before I get into that, make sure to hit that like button and that subscribe button if you like the content that you're hearing. One of the things that I think is important to know is as I share everything, one, you know exactly what happened, two, you know that I have an underlying genetic connective tissue disorder called Ehlers-Danlos Syndrome, I have hypermobility type, I did not know that for 10 years, and so as surgeries and things were being done, we thought my body, my tissue was, you know, healthy. Hindsight is always 2020, and even as I go through everything, it's like red flag, red flag, another red flag, because there was a problem going on. So this all began on September 21st, 2005. I was a junior in high school. I was 16. I jumped up while in high school gym class to catch a football. I landed wrong on my right leg, so right off the bat I had an unstable ankle, an unstable knee, and unstable hips, which those are all red flags, um, but there was something more going on, and there was one physician who did my knee operations who thought that there was something more going on, because one, just a really bad landing like that should not have caused all the injuries that I sustained and just the tearing of the cartilage in my hips and so forth. And so not only did it cause issues with my legs, but I was on crutches for a combined total of 16 months. Um, it caused serious trouble with my shoulder blades, especially, especially my left one. My left one was killing. I remember coming home from school the one day, sitting at the kitchen table and telling my mom that I felt like I was slouching and my shoulders were rolled in forward and it was just very, very painful to sit upright. And I remember her asking me, you know, can you try to, can you see if you can sit more upright? And I would try that and it killed. And so I just continued to slouch. Um, one would think, oh, if you're on crutches for that duration of time, like you would get, get some muscles and get strong. But for me, the opposite happened. Um, my shoulder blades were killing me, my shoulder joints were killing me, and we just didn't understand why my body was falling apart in the manner in which it was. And so in 2007, I ended up being referred to a surgeon in Kentucky um, he did his exam and in five minutes I was diagnosed with what is called a scapular muscle detachment and that is when the muscles detach from your shoulder blades and so I had detached my rhomboid major my rhomboid minor and lower trapezius muscle the surgeon thinks that occurred because from going doing this motion every single day on crutches plus the backpack. Essentially, if you were to take two pieces of paper and you go like this, it's gonna wear off, wear down. And it's gonna get thinner and thinner and thinner and thinner and eventually you're gonna get a tear in the paper. And so basically that is what happened to me. It was really cool because actually in surgery I asked if I could get pictures and they did take pictures and you could see exactly where the tear was. Um, you could see my scapula, which is your shoulder blade bone. Um, and then I could see after where they sewed the muscles together and everything, you know, was all well and good again. But because the muscles on my shoulder blades were torn like that, I caused a lot of instability with my shoulder joints. Um, it's important that you differentiate your shoulder joints from your shoulder blades. The shoulder girl drill is made of your shoulder joint and then your clavicle, which is your collarbone and your shoulder blade. And so those are three separate joints that make up the shoulder. But yeah, it just got overlooked for quite a while, which is really, really frustrating um, because I know that I am by far not the only one who has suffered with severe um, scapular pain and 
it's really hard to put into words just how bad that pain is because when you tell somebody that your shoulder blades are shoulder blades are hurting and it's like making you physically ill because of the pain um, sometimes I think people can think one is being over dramatic but I can assure you nobody with a scapular muscle detachment is being over dramatic it is an awful injury to have and so 2007 through 2013 I was in the thick of it with having surgery on both of my shoulder joints and both of my shoulder blades I had endured 22 surgeries on them majority of everything was because they were unstable regardless of how much physical therapy and strengthening I would do we didn't know that I had any kind of connective tissue disorder it was ruled out in 2007 prior to even undergoing surgery but because the gene for the hypermobility type of Ehlers-Danlos syndrome wasn't identified unfortunately I got overlooked and I think I truly think had I been diagnosed I would have had a different outcome because my body was treated as if my tissue was healthy and it really my tissue wasn't healthy and so it explained why my muscles tore so easily why you know my cartilage would tear just for the hell of it why I just wasn't improving as much as one would hope to improve. But to just go down the list, I've had bank art repairs, capsular placation. I had what's called multi-directional instability, open capsular shifts, synovectomy, subacromial decompressions, extensive debridement, labral detachments. One of the main injuries that I had was issues I had was called quadrilateral space syndrome and I had severe pain that ran from the back of my shoulder and went down my arm. I remember researching all the time on the computer to try to find some answers because at this point I, nobody knew what was wrong. I figured I had nothing to lose so I may as well do my research and see if I can find anything because there isn't any harm in that. And it can be intimidating because like I'm not a doctor, I don't work in the healthcare field, but I do know my body and you know your body as well. I don't know, I just think it's important that you advocate for yourself. But I remember researching and quadrilateral space syndrome popped up and it's a compression of the axillary nerve. And I then remember reaching out to my physical therapist and my doctors and they were in agreement that this very well could be the answer to the pain because it started in 2008 and it didn't get diagnosed until 2011 and um, I ended up going to California where I was referred to a surgeon and sure enough I did in fact have quadrilateral space syndrome, had the surgery done and I have never had that pain ever since and so it's been over 10 years now and so that's a huge, um, like, praise God moment. Another thing I want you to try to keep in mind as I, like, list all these things, like, you might be shaking your head and be, um, sadly, with chronic illness and especially with Ehlers-Danlos Syndrome, when you're having these spontaneous muscle tears and joint subluxations and joint dislocations, um, medical professionals thought it was abuse and I was spoken to and my parents were spoken to and people don't realize the effect that has on not only the patient but on you know my caregivers my every single complaint that I ever had was there for a reason so just keep that in mind so from all the work on my shoulders and all the work on my shoulder blades you are in a brace and that brace goes on your neck, you know, to immobilize you. And I still, at this point, was not diagnosed with any anything. I just, you know, had loose tissue. And the weight of my arm and having all that weight on my neck 
caused this area of my neck to become unstable. And in 2012, that's where the roads crossed. I was in the world of orthopedics with my shoulder blades especially, and I was also introduced to the world of spine problems. Um, I had to wear my bracing different. I had custom braces made when I would have my surgeries on my shoulder blades because I couldn't withstand the weight on my neck. I had so many neurological symptoms. I had uncontrollable burping. I was always nauseous. I couldn't keep food down. Um, geez, I don't know. It all became so normal. Just like constant head pressure and headaches and my legs were spastic and shaky. And I called it like neurofunk because there really wasn't a way to describe it. Um, it was truly just like this neuro, neuro funk. Um, the ringing in my ears, the feeling of like fire in your throat. But 2013, no 2012 in the fall, I had a major shoulder dislocation and ended up having to go to the emergency room now at this point it's uh, seven eight nine ten eleven it's just over five six years of myself my parents or even my family um putting my shoulder back into place because i we didn't have to go to the emergency room every single time we were taught but that day we ended up going to the emergency room and they yanked and they pulled and it was torturous. Um, I had severe neck pain immediately. And the very next day, it felt like I was post-op and had just had surgery because the pain was so bad. I could no longer move my right shoulder. Um, my neck, I was most comfortable having my neck bent forward to help alleviate the pain that I was having because it was stabbing like crazy. And at that point, that's when I was seeing, being referred to neurosurgeons and I was being seen by my orthopedic and stuff. And so it was not easy. Um, I mean, I'm six foot two and I was 135 pounds. That's underweight. And I looked sick and I felt sick and it just wasn't easy and like with my shoulder blades it took a long time like the one surgery didn't work I've had like eight surgeries on my shoulder blades um, literally those muscles they just tore like crazy and I had to have complete just like repair and revision um, I ended up being referred to a surgeon in Minnesota he was the most validating doctor that I ever saw he was the one that told me that I had Ehlers-Danlos Syndrome. I very likely had Ehlers-Danlos Syndrome. I was being referred to genetics to have it um, confirmed because at this point it was 19, 20, 21, 22, I've had, had 24 surgeries. And it's a lot of surgery to endure and a lot on the body. And so he helped me. They He put in Achilles tendon allografts, which is donor tissue a donor it was a donor tendon and he stabilized my shoulder blades for me and it's been eight years since I had my left side done and all things considering like it's doing significantly better than I ever could have imagined and then my right side was done also like seven eight years ago too but with the spine because that's where a lot of the questions in it's like the spine is the juicy stuff it's where all the the stories are um, the weight of the brace on my neck caused my neck to dislocate and to subluxate I saw a number of doctors that I had that I was referred to the consensus was there is something wrong with you, but we do not know what it is. And so that was rough to live with. Um, the surgeon that did my surgery on my shoulder blades, I reached out to him 
and he ordered me a neck collar that I wore to help hold my head up because my head felt like a bobblehead. It felt so heavy and was so hard to hold up. And so the brace provided a lot of relief. Prior to any surgery in the fall of 2015, I had just left the hospital from Minnesota and was treated very, very poorly and told there was nothing wrong with me. I was venting in the car to God with my mom, trying to figure out what are we supposed to do next. Um, I have nobody help to help me. Like, there's no one to help me at this point. And then all of a sudden my phone rang and it was a geneticist's office. And then they told me that they had a cancellation the very next morning at 8 a.m. And they asked if I could go. We ended up going to see the, gene the geneticist the very next morning. And at that point, I was officially diagnosed with Ehlers-Danlos Syndrome hypermobility type. And he also is the one that referred me to the neurosurgeon that did surgery on my spine. Ehlers-Danlos Syndrome is when your body produces faulty collagen. Collagen is like the glue that holds your body together. You can think of it as a bad foundation to the house. If the foundation to a house is not strong, the house is not going to be very sturdy and it's going to you know, kind of crumble and you're going to have a lot of problems with it. And you can think of it as the same way uh, with the body. And so in my case, that's exactly what happened. I was very strong and athletic. Um, and when that injury happened to me back in 2005, all of the exercise that I was doing every single day came to a stop and my muscles weakened and I just deteriorated and I was never able to get ahead of it. And so I just ended up with significant trouble. And so 2015, uh, I met with the neurosurgeon who absolutely agreed that I should not be able to move my neck in which I was moving. Um, to put in perspective, I could get my, ch my chin to lay flat on my chest, um, which is a lot more. I was able to bend my head backward and get my skull to touch the back of my back. And it just, I moved in ways that I shouldn't have been able to move. I ended up having what is called a movement fluoroscopy and it's, think of it like having an x-ray, but instead of holding still when the x-ray is done, they had me move my head forward and backward to see what was happening in real time. Like when I move my head from here, you know, down to my chest, like what is happening? They're able to see the bones, the vertebrae. And it was at that point, and I still remember the the tech that was assisting us looking at me with this look of horror on his face, and his eyes were huge and like popping out of his head like Bugs Bunny. I knew in that moment they found something, but I was, wasn't told what they had found yet. And then my neurosurgeon told me that my neck was dislocating at C3, C4, C4, C5, C5, C6, 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 C6 C7. C7, T1, T1, T2. That's a lot of levels. I was not safe. I was told I had to remain in my um, neck brace full time. There was fear of paralysis because if we were to hit a pothole just right, my spinal cord would get um, damaged potentially. And so there was a lot of fear and I was placed into a halo brace. So that scar there, that scar there, and then there's two above each ear. We didn't want to do a fusion without knowing if I would benefit from it. And by having the halo brace on, it definitely proved 100% that I needed to have my neck fused. So April 2016, I was fused from C3 down to T2. I then was kept in a halo brace for the next three, four months. Um, they wanted to ensure that I would fuse and new bone would grow. In August of 2016, I was there to have my halo brace removed and I knew it wasn't gonna go good. And the reason I knew is because when I had had a custom brace made of my spine back in 
like April or May of 2016. This was after surgery. They had to loosen my halo and take like the back off while I was laying flat and everything um, in order to do the, the cast, the mold of my neck and my chest. And when they did the front, there wasn't a problem, but then I had a, then they put it back on and then in order to do the back, I had to sit on the chair and straddle the chair and like lean forward with the pillows like this. And when they loosened the back, I felt my skull slide forward. I had to go to the doctor. I lasted like a week, if that, and went to the doctor a week later um, and they had to pull my head back into alignment. And so August, 2016, they loosened. It was the resident. My doctor had to step out to grab a wrench Literally, they use a wrench to loosen the screws. And so he loosened the screws and my skull slid forward and I flew my chair on its hind legs. So my skull would slide backward. I locked eyes with my mom because um, I knew it was bad. And then I sat forward and my skull slid forward again. And so I flew back on the hind legs of the chair. Um, at this point I was crying, but like I wasn't talking. I just said, the only word I was able to say was like loose or it moved, something along those lines. But then my surgeon walked in into a scene that he did not prepare himself for. He had absolutely no idea it was going to occur. My mom remained very, very calm the entire time. And truly I just locked eyes with her the entire time. Like she, she was my, my focal point. And so I stared at her and then my surgeon came behind me, asked me to sit. And so I moved the chair back and my skull slid again. And so um, I leaned back and at that point he grabbed my skull like this and then they sat me forward and then they got the halo vest off of me. They kept the, like, the ring in. Um, he held my skull, they put me in my custom brace that goes, that holds you from here, and then it goes down to like here on you. Um, and they needed to do it because they needed to see if I could be out of the halo brace. So they, um, they tried, and it was a complete and total disconnect between my brain and my body. I had uncontrollable shaking down the right side of my body. They wanted me to try to stand. My right leg was shaking, my right arm was shaking, and I couldn't stand. And so they just put me back on the halo brace and then I was in surgery five days later and I had my skull fused down to C5. And then remained in the halo brace. It came off December 1st, 2016. That video is actually up if so if you want to look at it watch it um you'll see it's you know meg's halo brace removal you'll also notice in that video that i'm also in a big bulky uh shoulder brace because i was scheduled for surgery on my shoulder blade <laughs> a week later december 7th in minnesota i had surgery 20 on my shoulder blade um not my left one on my right one and I kept telling my surgeon that it felt very, very different than previous tears and stuff. And that's because it was eight inches of my trapezius muscle was detached from my spine. And then in addition, my muscles were just completely torn, disintegrated, essentially. So they had to make me a new rhomboid muscle. And again, they used an Achilles tendon allograft, which is a donor tendon make me a new rhomboid and then they had to also use a secondary Achilles tendon allograft to help stabilize my shoulder blade and then they used a third Achilles tendon allograft that goes horizontally and connects both my shoulder blades together um, and it has helped so much. Unexpectedly is when I ended up in surgery to have my shoulder pinned. Unfortunately, the spine saga continued, and in 2017, I was allowed to start weaning from the shoulder brace that I was in, and when it was off, I noticed that my spine was shifting to the left, and 
it was like, what the hell is happening now? And I mess, I showed my physical therapist and I reached out to my surgeon. Um, I had imaging done and it showed that I had like, be, it was just like a, I think it was like just like 10 or 12, to 12 degree uh, curvature of my spine. Um, in hindsight, I had what is called tethered cord. You get the bottom of your spinal cord is supposed to hang freely, but mine was connected to some cord sort of tissue. And so there was a lot of tension of my spine. And oftentimes this happens when a patient undergoes surgery on their cervical spine, especially when they have cranial cervical instability. So when they fuse your skull, C1 and C2. Because when they pull up and give that traction, you're just like really taut on the spinal cord. Um, I remember advocating and asking my physician about it many, many, many times because I was having trouble with my bladder. I was having trouble like with my bowel um, digestive system working. I was having trouble walking um, or like my knee would buckle and I would have the shaking spasticity that would happen. Um, my reflexes were messed up and also to, to develop the scoliosis that happened to me. I was 26 or 27. It's really, 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 really difficult. Like right now sitting and like sharing this with you, it's like I'm hard on myself and I question myself of like, why didn't she do this? Why didn't she do that? But again, I mean, I have all the information that I have right now. It's like, yeah, that was a red flag, but there was something wrong and I should have gone in you know, I should have done more, but that's not, it's not the way it worked out. My spine was continually uh, becoming like more and more unstable and shifting to the left and then shifting to the right. And I was stuck bent forward. The area below my fusion right here, so T3, 4, 5, 6, 7, had become unstable. So my neck was stuck like this. Like I wore a neck brace to try to alleviate the weight on my spine, but unfortunately it just didn't do enough. And then in September of 2017, my fusion was extended from C6 down to L2, so lumbar vertebrae two. Um, I remember the first time I stood up, I asked, why can I see the ground? Because when I had the halo brace on, I was in it for eight months, but prior to being fused, they fused me in a very, very, very specific position that alleviated so many of my symptoms. And so I just did not understand why did my physician change the angle of my spine. And my mom talked to my surgeon and I, you know, told him, you know, I hope you're right with the decision that she made because that decision was, it just went downhill from there. Literally, it just went downhill with so many problems. Um, I was discharged September 28th against my will. I was being forced to leave. I was told that I did not look sick enough to be in the hospital. I was complaining of some very, very, very severe neck pain and I knew it was different because of prior surgery on my neck and everything and this was entirely different. While at home, I was a total witch. Like I was an evil witch. You could sub substitute the W with a B if you would like, because I was that. I was in so much pain, I wasn't me. And I said, like, the meanest things on the planet and words are, you know, can lead a deep bruise, pain. But the pain that I was in was a level of pain that I never knew even existed. I was in touch with my surgeon's nurse a lot. She told me that this isn't normal pain. It doesn't sound like normal pain. My surgeon wasn't in the hospital. He was just like out of town. Um, she didn't think that I should come back to that hospital because to see, until my surgeon got back because the residents were overzealous. Um, and so she told me when he would be back at the hospital and to come to the emergency room that day. And so we did. Um, and yeah, uh, my neck was broke at C5, C6, 
my surgeon never connected the rods in my neck. What happened is the fusion gave out. And so um, if this is C5 and this is C6, it, my neck was just slowly breaking in these small increments over time. And uh, um, I don't have the words to, con to convey that kind of pain. And when I did find out, I remember telling every single person that doubted me like while I was at the hospital like I told you so I told you so I told you so I knew there was something wrong and there was something wrong there was something really 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 wrong I was told I had dangerously life-threatening instability that I shouldn't have been able to walk into the hospital and that I should be paralyzed shoulders down or that I should be dead I believe in God um, medically speaking I should not be here in the shape that I am. Um, at the very least, I should be paralyzed, but I'm not, and I'm grateful to God for that. Um, I was in the hospital. I was placed back into a halo brace. It was at that time that I learned it is very different being put in a halo brace when your neck is not broken and when your neck is broken. Worst pain of my life. Hands down, up, at, up until that point, it was the worst pain that I had ever experienced. So, that was that. And then, so there was surgery, surgery on the halo, surgery to stabilize C5, C6. The wire failed. Surgery again, C3 to T3. And then we got to 2018, and I was um, just in a large brace at this point. Um, so then 2018, I had surgery on my, I was with a new surgeon, great surgeon, like he gave me my life back. Largest surgery done at Mayo Clinic that year. Did she get a cookie or some kind of like trophy plaque, I don't know. Um, but he had to remove all the hardware from my skull all the way down to L2, and so, so 12, 19, 20, 23 level fusion. That's a lot of levels in your spine. Brutal recovery, significant complications. Again, my um, relationship with God definitely increased and got even deeper because of what I went through. I wouldn't have willingly chosen to go through it in any way, shape, or form, but it is definitely the best thing that came out of all of it. And so I was fused, and then um, 2019, the area of my spine below my fusion gave out, and so they fused from lumbar vertebrae 3 down to S2, which is your sacrum, second part of your second bone in your sacrum, and then my SI joints. I was doing great for six months, walked a mile finally, and the very next day I was attacked by a dog. The rods in my bro back broke at L5, S1 on both sides, and then my left S side joint um, loosened like as well, and this wasn't good. It was during COVID, it was considered an elective surgery, even though there was compression on my spinal cord and there was all these issues. And so I didn't get my surgery done until March of 2021 and had the repair. And from a structural standpoint, my spine is doing phenomenal. I've had severe pain walking through my left leg ever since. And then I found out this year that my pelvis was fractured on the left side. Um, and then I was referred to a doctor and my left SI joint is infused in any way, shape or form. It's very likely that the hardware is moving in my SI joint. And so um, that'll have to get addressed at some point, but I did have an injection CT guided. And so it ensures that the medication is injected directly into the joint and it will not spread to a different area. And yeah, it has helped so, so much. And at this point, it's just buying time until I have no other choice but to endure the surgery. But 
that's how I went from ankle to uh, to spine. It was a ton of information, and I'm sure there are a lot of questions. Um, maybe if you have a question, put it in the comments, and maybe we'll do like a Q&A video and answer any questions that you all may have. I hope this video is beneficial and you will stick around for the next video where I read what is titled a hard blog to write. Um, again, make sure that you hit that subscribe button and don't forget to hit like and I hope you all have a wonderful day and so bye!